Hey friends, Ari Koenuma here, and today I wanted to share with you my thoughts on Alice in Chains' Sunshine, an early gem off of their first album, Facelift, and see what makes this song an impactful song. Um, it was requested to me by my good friend Anne, um, who said that it's one of her favorite songs, and, and she wanted to learn uh, you know, what gets into this song that makes it so special. So I dug in, and, and here's what I found. Alright, the main riff of the song is in the key of A minor, and I think it creates a perfectly nice slimy sound, and if you uh, look at the lyrics too, it's talking about being contagious and sick desire and stuff, and it's a great uh, cohesion between lyrics and music. I expect that uh, Jerry Cantrell writes with guitar riff first, which is something I do too, and I just kind of listen to the music and, and figure out what the music has to say and write lyrics around that, and this is a perfect, uh, really sickening riff, right? Go something kind of like this. And it's in the key of A minor, but it emphasizes, well, I shouldn't say emphasize, but it, it contains two songs. So the thing, the key, key emphasis in it is on this note. And it's, it's the minor third. It's the da da minor note in the minor key. But then uh, what's, um, what's heavy about this, this slight um, uh, sharp, Sharpening, or, or sh sharpening is not the right word, but you, you bend the note a little slightly, which creates this really gnarly, uh, nasty feel. So, so listen to how I, it will sound if I don't do that subtle bend there. It goes comes from something like this. <laughs> Right, so uh, compare that with uh, if I do do the bend. You see how it adds the sickening feel to it? And then this turnaround too, it has this... Uh, that this this is a, a really classic uh, blues uh, uh, scale type uh, move from the key of A minor. It goes uh, root minor third fourth sharp fourth or so flat fifth and then fifth and then this. Is That's a tritone of a, in the key of A minor, and it's one of the, the most dissonant notes. It's sometimes, in the music history, I was taught that it was called devil's tone, uh, on, and for good reason. Anyway, so between the, the, uh, the slight detuning or raising of the minor third for that uh, dissonant sound, and then the, the tritone or the devil's note in there, the, the song has the element of sickening sound and again in metal that's a good thing right also notice there is a s subtle variation in the riff um, I, I played it kind of sloppily but um, the first time he plays this riff it's a different rhythmic figure from the rest of the time and it's a sort of a quirkiness that you don't really notice on this unless you're paying attention to or you're trying to learn how to play this song but it's that kind of sort of a subtle quirkiness or, or just weirdness that you build into riff that actually ends up making it very, how should I say, making it able to stand the test of time. I, the, another song that comes to mind is Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. That one has rhythmic quirks to it too. That is, if you actually try to sit down and learn it, it's like, it just trips your mind. It's just it's really weird. But uh, this this one starts like this. So the first time around, you start on this this note, uh, right? And then the other times, it starts on this low note. 
So the first time around, it has this sort of a sense of like you're starting somewhere in the middle, and it, there's not an anchor to it. And uh, it's a uh, it's a really interesting riff. Um, I really like it, and it's really fun to figure out and play it. So from the main riff in A minor, the song goes to a different section, which is this pounding heavy thing in the key of D minor. <laughs> And you also notice that the song has a different tempo to it, it quickens a little bit. And uh, I'm always a big proponent for a song that has different tempos in, in built into different sections because, you know, if you're, if you're doing EDM or dance music or whatever, then it's perfectly fine to keep the song from the beginning to the end at exactly the same tempo. But if you're making rock music and if you want to keep people's attention, then messing with the rhythm is a great idea. And I find it really interesting when the song has different tempos built into sections. It just, rhythm is the foundation of the music and when you change it, um, it just catches people's attention. So the song goes back and forth between the main verse riff and then that heavy uh, D uh, riff, uh, heavy riff in D. And then from there, finally the song arrives to the chorus, which if you notice, it just uh, uh, from the um, uh, preceding section, it just, I mean, it's a little awkward because the preceding section is a little fast and then it goes back to the original slower tempo. So in the song, you can see that the band had to kind of take a pause at the beginning of the first chorus, you know, to hit this um, uh, big D chord. Notice how the chord sort of changes much slower there and then um, you know by having a busy riff right in front and then coming to this chorus and slowing down with chord changes happening slower too it just gives you a sense of arrival there's all of a sudden room to breathe and then you pay attention to the melody there you know that there's an arrival chorus and the interesting thing about this song is that it doesn't follow the traditional verse chorus verse chorus pattern well, you could call that uh, D minor riff, the pounding part, the chorus, too, but it doesn't really have the hook for that. So you know that the, you know, the the slow D part is the arrival real chorus. So the arrival chorus is much uh, delayed compared to what you expect in the traditional songs. Uh, if you're trying to create a hit song, you know they always say you know just get to the chorus really fast because that's like the money part. But it's almost like anti-hit mentality in that you know if you want to give a middle finger to the whole hit mentality, then you delay the arrival of chorus. But then uh, there is a sense of payoff or, or greater payload when the chorus arrives because you sort of set up the anticipation for longer and you're just waiting and yearning for that chorus. Uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a technique I, I use um, in one of my songs too, if you listen to my song called uh, Diamond Sleeps Night, uh, the real chorus of the song comes about halfway through the song. Um, and then just like this song, uh, you know, after the bridge section, the chorus comes back a little closer. So you feel like you're getting the nice, you know, uh, yeah, like a payload in the second half of the song. And then just song ends up sounding really satisfying. I'm a big proponent of um, songs that deviate from regular verse, chorus, verse, chorus structure because it gives a song, song a sense of adventure, like you don't know what's going to happen next kind of thing. And if you do what's expected, it's easier to get into people's head, but then people get tired of it faster too. And if you sort of mess with people's expectations and build in sort of a quirks to the song structure too, it makes the song last and um, really stand up to the test of time. You know, even after years of repeated listens, people still, like my friend Anne, you know, call, consider it a favorite. And there's a good reason for that. So even though you know it's off of their first album, there is a songwriting maturity that is really uh, evident in this song. From you know having different uh, tempos that come and go, having different keys that come and go, and having you know sort of uh, deviated from t expected traditional verse chorus structure. I mean these are all sort of signs of an artist who really want to sort of 
stretch his creativity, push the boundaries, uh, establish his own thing rather than following the crowd and going for the hit kind of thing. And the result is is a deep cut that you know may not be as famous as their well-known songs, but if you if it really hits your sweet spot, it's like wow, that's your favorite song. So uh, that's something that we can really take away from this song and really appreciate. And you know, thumbs up to Jerry and Allison Chains for creating something like that right off of their first album. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't. And uh, Better yet, uh, if you could tell your friends about my channel, that would be really greatly appreciated. Um, I get comments here and there saying, "Oh, uh, I'm surprised this, you know, videos don't have as many views as some other channels." And uh, there's something that you can very much do to help me out, which is to, you know, post it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you uh, hang out, is saying, you know, "Hey, this is a cool video. You should check it out." Um, that would be really, really helpful, and I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Alright, I'll see you next time. Be well.